Hi, I'm Lou and I am a poly hobbyist. Chances are you are too. Today I'm going to be talking about the Visual Studio Code ROS extension for ROS 2. I'm going to be covering a few topics. First, launching VS Code from a ROS terminal window. An overview of ROS UI elements. ROS 2 commands available from the command palette. And finally, URDF editing. So let's get started. So we're going to start today in our terminal window. I want to ensure that ROS has been sourced by in, uh, ensuring that the ROS distro and ROS version are both set in the environment. I can then CD into a ROS2 workspace and launch code from here. I'm going to turn on screen capture mode by bringing up the command palette, which is shift uh, control shift P uh, and toggling the screencast mode. That allows you to see what I'm typing as well as clicking on. At the very bottom, we see that there is a status bar item for ROS2.foxy with an X by it. This is a to let you know that the ROS graph has not been started. The ROS2 daemon is not running, uh, but it actually has detected that this is a ROS2 workspace and that Foxy is the detected workspace. On the right hand side, you can see that there is another ROS in the config uh, at, in the status bar, and this is for configuration, uh, specifically the C++ configuration. This is what Visual Studio Code will launch as the debug configuration uh, when we talk about debugging in the future. If you select the ROS2.foxy icon in the status bar, it'll bring up a status page and you can see that we don't have anything running. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start the ROS graph. To do that, I'm gonna bring up the command palette, control shift P and type ROS colon start. What this will do is it'll launch the ROS2 daemon in the background uh, and provide some information about ROS2 itself. Uh, exa for example, what topics are available and what services are running. And I don't have anything running right now aside from the system uh, services, so that's what you see here. I'm also going to show uh, stopping the graph, so ROS stop will actually disable the daemon. Now this doesn't actually cause all of the ROS nodes in ROS2 to stop. Uh, this just stops the, the daemon that's monitoring it. So let's go ahead and start that up again. I'm going to go ahead and show you the terminal. So when creating the ROS terminal, what this does is it actually uh, sources your ROS environment, starts the uh, your favorite terminal, whether it's PowerShell or Bash or Command Prompt. It doesn't actually in the remote environment. So when we talk about containers and SSH in the future, this command will actually launch the terminal in the remote environment. And you have access to all of your ROS commands, ROS2, topic, list, for example. Updating C++ properties allows you to configure VS Code for IntelliSense. This will actually inject code into the C++ property JSON that install uh, includes the in, uh, all of the include files for your dependencies, also sets up the, da uh, the IntelliSense database and prevents it from limiting it just to your code, which allows you to type um, commands all over the place. So for example, uh, in the callback here, I want to type message and you can see we have access to all of the message metadata. You can launch ROS launch files. So if you have a launch file, you can launch it here. You, there is also a ROS step, so you can update ROS dependencies. I'm going to go ahead and show you the next step, which is uh, building. So if you press Control Shift B, you can run call can build. Now the way this is detected is it actually is looking for a call con workspace. So it will run call con if it detects a source directory inside of an environment. So it's important that when you open up your Visual Studio Code workspace that is rooted at a ROS environment, otherwise it won't initialize. So if you select call com build, it will go ahead and run. It does pass some uh, 
parameters which uh, are useful for debugging, including building with symbols, uh, as well as rooting the environment and redirecting output to the screen. If you have an error in your build, and you run the build, when it detects this error, it will be properly formatted for VS Code so that you can press Control and click on it to take you directly to that error line. And you can go ahead and fix it. To demonstrate URDF editing, I opened up a different workspace. In this case, a NAV2 demonstration with the TurtleBot 3. The URDF editor will support uh, visualizing both URDF as well as Zachro files. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and open up the TurtleBot Burger URDF. Press Control Shift P to bring up the command palette and click Preview URDF. This is, uses the ROS web tools hosted in a web view that renders the URDF in three dimensions, including uh, some lighting effects as well as um, rendering the 3D files. And you can use the middle mouse button to navigate around, the left mouse button to rotate. If you're editing the URDF, for example, uh, changing the location of a wheel. When you save it, the URDF is reloaded uh, with the new values, and you can see that I've offset it here. And when you save, reloads. Um, so quick turnaround on the URDF.